Hello, welcome to La Excellence. In our recap program, we are discussing monthly current affairs videos. In this video, let us discuss December 2020's current affairs and this is part 3 of it. PDF of this video is available in the description. If you want to write test series based on the monthly current affairs videos, you can join the course by clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Let us discuss governance related issues. First one is Data Privacy Bill 2020. Data Privacy Bill was proposed in 2018. Later amendments were made in 2020. What is Data Privacy Law or Data Privacy Bill? Government has appointed a committee known as BN Sri Krishna Committee to recommend various measures on protecting data privacy. Privacy is declared as fundamental right under Article 21 in Puttaswami case. In this context, to protect the privacy, data privacy, government has asked this committee to suggest a draft bill. This committee has produced a draft bill. According to this, data privacy authority should be established, which is responsible for enforcement and effective implementation of the law. And there should be an appellate body to dispose any cases against the cases or orders against the DPA. In 50 statutes and regulations were identified by this panel, which will overlap with the data protection framework. These needs to be suitably amended. And to boost the data protection in India, it has suggested certain changes to Aadhaar Act. And public and private entities both have to adhere to these guidelines. For the consumer, from the consumer side, if we look at the provisions of this bill, data can be processed or shared by any entity, either government or private entity, only after the consent. Safeguards are provided, including penalties, to prevent the misuse of personal data. All data to be categorized under three heads. One, general data. Two, sensitive data. Three, critical data. And consumer's data will be used only after taking consent. So, from consumer side, this is the protection. For the government and regulatory bodies, government will have to power to obtain any non-personal data from the companies. And this bill mandates that financial and critical data has to be stored in India. Sensitive data, we said data will be categorized into three types. So, out of that, sensitive data has to be stored in India but can be processed outside with the consent of the government and with the individual. Then what the companies have to do? Social media firms, they have to make a policy for voluntary verification of consent from the users. Second, sharing data without the consent of the user will entail fine up to 15 crore rupees or 4 percentage of total global turnover of that company. Data breach or inaction will entail fine up to 5 crore or 2 percentage of global turnover. These are some of the important um, proposals under this Data Privacy Bill 2020. In September 2020 revision series, we have discussed about BN Sri Krishna Committee and Chris Gopal Krishnan Committee. Try to recollect that once. These are some of the provisions of this bill. Please go through it once. Next issue is PM Vani. Prime Minister has launched Prime Minister Wi-Fi Access Network Interface, which is also known as PM Vani. It got the cabinet approval. What is this initiative? This is a platform which allows setting up public Wi-Fi hotspots across the country via public data offices or public data PDOs. PDOs. It will not require the PDO to get a license or pay the fees to the try. And they involve multiple players, PDOs, public data office aggregators, app providers, central registry, etc. With the central registry, data of PDOs will be stored. These PDOs, they act as facilitators between service providers and users. PDOA is an aggregator of all these PDOs. That means, let's say these are the users of the public internet. These are the service providers. Each service provider will take permission from PDO. Each PDO, all these PDOs will be under PDO aggregator. Such a structure is established under this particular scheme. And a person who wants to use public Wi-Fi can do so via an app 
and will make the payments as per the usage based on the usage uh, app payments can be done this projects will also have app developer they build the platform to register the users and they discover the wani compliant wifi hotspots in the public area and they display them on the app uh, as the consumers they register in the app they discover the wifi hotspot through it through that and they can use it and center for development of telematics that record the details of app providers public data office aggregators and public data officers officers so this is how pm wani is going to further enhance the digitization and use of digital applications in india next issue is lakshadweep and optical fiber cable network submarine optical fiber cable network what is this internet services are provided through optical fiber cable network these optical fiber cables are underground on land submarine on over water below beneath the water that means from one continent to another continent underwater submarine communication cables are there and from this particular place to this particular place let's say across uh, uh, antarctic across pacific ocean we have submarine cables now lakshadweep as we know these are islands in the arabian sea region we want to provide high speed internet to these particular islands that's why union cabinet has approved laying the undersea optical fiber cable to connect 11 islands of lakshadweep with kochi by 2023 it helps in improving the broadband connectivity in this union territory this will be funded through universal service obligation fund usof this will improve the telecommunication facilities in the lakshadweep area by providing large bandwidth and it plays important role in enhancing the e governance under universal service obligation fund each telecom company contributes to this particular fund out of the total revenues they get um, that they get annually then what is this submarine optical fiber cable network this is a cable laid on the seabed between land based stations in this case from kochi to lakshadweep islands it it is to carry the telecommunication signals across the stretches of oceans and seas optical fiber elements they are individually coated with plastic layers and they have protective tube for suitable for the marine environment and this won't harm the marine organisms and this will be protected in the marine environment already last year for, from chennai andaman and nicobar islands are connected with submarine optical cable fiber network now lakshadweep islands will be connected by 2023 next issue is epidemic diseases act 1897 why this was a news under epidemic diseases act controls were imposed on various activities during the lockdowns in this context let us understand what is this epidemic diseases act and what are the provisions under this act it was introduced by the colonial government during the bombay plague conditions in 1980s it was passed in 1987 important provisions under this act includes state governments and union territories they can take special measures they can formulate regulations to contain the outbreak two it empowers the states to prescribe temporary regulations that, that has to be observed by the public or a group of individuals to contain or prevent the outbreak state may determine the manner and why and how the expenses are incurred due to curtail this particular outbreaks state governments may take certain measures which can allow inspection of persons traveling by train and otherwise it has the penalties it provides for penalties for disobeying any of the regulations and orders made under the act and it also has legal protection to the implementing officers under this particular act lockdowns were imposed under this act next issue is jal jeevan mission jal jeevan mission is the renamed version of national rural drinking water project national rural drinking water project was ne- renamed as jal jeevan mission this jal jeevan mission it envisages supply of 55 liters of water per person per day to every rural households 
through functional household tap connections by 2024. This is to provide rural drinking water to everyone to their own house by 2024. It focuses on demand and supply side management. Very, very important. Demand side management by providing the water. Supply side management by going for water harvesting, groundwater management, wastewater treatment. These are all supply side measures. Piped water provision is demand side measures, demand side and supply side. And this mission, Jal Jeevan mission, it is based on community approach to the water. It encourages the extensive IEC, information education and communication to create awareness. Funding pattern for this program includes 50-50 for normal states, 90-10 for special category states, 100% for union territories. Jal Jeevan mission deals with demand and supply side. Please understand and remember this. And it converges with various schemes that are there under central and state governments. And it integrates demand and supply side management of water at the local level. Next issue is Jal Shakti Abhiyan. We should not get confused between Jal Jeevan mission and Jal Shakti Abhiyan. Jal Jeevan mission is National Rural Drinking Water Project's renamed version. Jal Shakti Abhiyan is a campaign. This is for water conservation and water security. It is launched by Ministry of Jal Shakti. This campaign includes five important components. One, rainwater harvesting. Two, renovation of traditional and other water bodies. Three, reuse of borewell recharge structures. Four, watershed development. Five, intensive afforestation. This Jal Shakti Abhiyan, this is an umbrella program which, which includes all other programs including Pradhana Mantri Krisi Sinchai Yojana. Pradhana Mantri under Pradhana Mantri Krisi Sinchai Yojana, which is implemented by Ministry of Agriculture, this uh, implements two, two major programs. One is per drop more crop. That means providing on providing water through micro irrigation systems. Second one is watershed development component of Pradhana Mantri Krisi Sinchai Yojana. These both are part of Jal Shakti Abhiyan. Jal Shakti Abhiyan. Next issue is Scheme for Promoting International Cultural Relations. This is the scheme implemented by Ministry of Culture. Objective of this scheme is to provide artists practicing in Indian art forms an opportunity to perform abroad under the banner name Festival of India. It promotes Indian culture plus it provides a continuous employment opportunity for the artists. It provides financial assistance to the cultural societies to actively promote Indian culture abroad and to organize the cultural activities depicting Indian culture. There are other schemes implemented by Ministry of Culture. What are they? Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat Scheme, Incredible India Scheme, Integration International Yoga Day, Rashtriya Ekta Divas. These are four important other schemes implemented by Ministry of Culture. All these schemes are to promote integration and culture of India. Next issue is National Mathematics Day. It is celebrated every year on December 22nd. It is observed to honor the birth anniversary of mathematician Srinivas Ramanujan. His contribution is for mathematical analysis, number theory, infinite series and continued fractions. This is the little description about his person, his life. Please go through it once. There's a movie called The Man Who Knew Infinity. It is a biopic on Srinivasa Ramanujan. Earlier in UPSC, this was the question. The Man Who Knew Infinity. This movie is based on whose life? That was the question in UPSC. Next issue is Atma Nirbhar Bharat Rojgar Abhyan. This is to boost the employment in the formal sector. There are many schemes for informal sector. This is for formal sector. This incentivizes creation of new employment opportunities during the recovery phase under Atmanirbhar Package 3.0. What this does, it provides the, it, it government contributes the PF funding in on behalf of the employees and employer. It provides subsidy for provident fund contribution for adding new employees to the establishments registered with the Employee Provident Fund. That means 
if a company employs more individuals more employees it will provide the subsidies and organization up to 1000 employees it would receive certain percent 12 percentage of um, employees wage and 12 percentage of employers contribution that means total 24 percentage of wages would be wage amount would be provided by the central government with employees more than 1000 employees the contribution would be 12 percent for two years so that it encourages these formal sector companies to recruit more individuals which ultimately leads to more employment next issue is pradhana mantri kaushal vikas yojana recently world bank has said that this pandemic has threatened 72 million youth into learning poverty in this context to move the youth from the learning poverty there are many schemes in india the important scheme is pradhana mantri kaushal vikas yojana this is a flagship scheme under ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship the objective of this scheme is to provide skill certification that is industry relevant skill training will be given to the individual at free of cost and then he will he or she will be given with the certificate and then with the individuals with prior learning experience or the existing skills this uh, skill development under this scheme recognition of prior prior learning will be provided training assessment fees are completely paid by the government Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana is implemented by the agency called as National Skill Development Corporation under Ministry of Skill Development. It implements through PPP mode, Public Private Partnership mode, PPP mode. Next issue is committees related to police reforms. Police reforms were suggested by many committees, including Rebero Committee, Padmanabhaya Committee, Mallimat Committee, etc. Rebero Committee was established by Supreme Court to review the NPC recommendations, National Police Committee recommendations and to reframe the new Police Act. Most of the recommendations are not implemented yet. Padmanabhaya Committee has dealt with issues of politicization and criminalization of police and police accountability. Mallimath Committee on Criminal Justice System has recommended for separating law and order police and investigating police and the this recommendation was also not implemented yet with regard to defense sector shaktar committee was appointed in 2015 and this committee was chaired by lieutenant general vb shaktar this committee has recommended for constituting chief of defense staff it also has recommended for theater commands so most of the recommendations of this committee are in implementation but with regard to police reforms most of these are not implemented yet there is a case called prakash singh case even under that seven point directive is given by the supreme court most of these directives are also not implemented next issue is food safety and standards authority of india this but this is a statutory body under Food Safety and Standards Act 2006. It is under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. There were eight older laws which were amalgamated to form this particular body, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer of Food Safety Authority of India are appointed by the government. Government Chairperson is of the rank to sec Secretary to Government of India. And it is not under Director General, Director General of Health Services, not under the charge of Director General of Health Services. It is an independent body. There are seven key processes. One, set standards of food product, products. It sets the standards of food products. It develops the safe food practices. It licenses for food businesses. It ensures compliance through inspections. It tests the food for standards. It trains and builds the capacity and it reaches the citizens through awareness programs. Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Next issue is Forest, Forest Rights Act 2006. Recently, 1200 tribal applications on review of their land titles was rejected by the court. That's why this was in news. So what is this Forest Rights Act and what are these land titles? Forest Rights Act full form is Scheduled Tribes and for Other Forest Dwellers Recognition of Forest Rights Act 2006. 
it provides the land titles forest rights act 2006 it recognizes and revests the forest rights and occupation in forest land to the two two groups of people one forest dwelling scheduled tribes to other traditional forest dwellers these forest rights they can be claimed by any member or community who has for at least 3 generations prior to the state primarily resided in the forest land and depend on the forest livelihood and it strengthens the conservation regime because under this act right to conservation is given as a statutory right to the uh, forest dwelling community and other forest tribes other forest uh, dwelling community gram sabha is the authority that initiates the process for determining the nature and extent of individual forest rights and community forest rights there are two types of rights individual forest rights and community forest rights or what should be given to whom that will be decided by gram sabha and the land titles are finalized at the district level gram sabha is recommendatory body but uh, finalization is at the district level next issue is human development index 2020 in 2020 human development report titled human development and anthropocene this was released this report is released by undp and it was first time released in the year 1990 from then onwards annually this report is released and it has five indices one is human development index second one is inequality adjusted human development index third one is gender development index fourth one is gender inequality index fifth one is multidimensional poverty index hdi is released as the first hdi is released as part of first, first human development report this ranks the countries on the basis of three parameters one is life expectancy at birth two on education attainment three on gross national income according to this human development report 2020 india has dropped two ranks in hdi and we we, we are at at 131 rank earlier we were in 129th so now 131 rank out of 189 countries india's gross national per capita income fell down on ppp basis per purchasing power parity basis life expectancy at birth it was around 69.7 years human development index released by undp and norway is in the top position after that second position ireland next let us discuss environment and disaster management related issues first one is lakshadweep is declared as organic area lakshadweep is the first union territory which is declared as 100% organic area under paramparagat krishi vikas yojana which which means organic farming improvement program under that program government provides certifications to the states and union territories based on the use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides if these if these states and union territories if they completely ban and if they if they use alternatives to synthetic fertilizers and pesticides and if they go for environment friendly activities farm activities they will be declared as organic areas in 2016 sikkim was declared as india's 100% organic state now lakshadweep is declared as organic area from cochin these are the group of lakshadweep islands minikoi is the a uh, last one that is the southern most island group of lakshadweep islands these are of coral origin coral origin next issue is five years of implementation of paris agreement we have a convention known as unfcc united nations framework convention on climate change under unfcc we have two protocols one is kyoto protocol second one is paris protocol paris agreement kyoto protocol it came into force in 2005 it was brought in in the year 1997 and it's it's time period implementation period was over by 2012 but we extended it till 2020 paris agreement is to be implemented from 2020 to 2020 to 2030 what are the goals under paris agreement 
ఓవరాల్ లిమిట్ ఓవరాల్ లిమిటింగ్ ది గ్లోబల్ టెంపరేచర్స్ ఇంక్రీజ్ కంపేర్ టు ద ప్రీ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ రెవల్యూషన్ బై టూ డిగ్రీస్ ఇఫ్ పాసిబుల్ బై వన్ పాయింట్ ఫైవ్ డిగ్రీస్ ఇట్ వాజ్ నెగోషియేటెడ్ బై వన్ నైంటీ సెవెన్ స్టేట్స్ అండ్ సైన్డ్ బై వన్ నైంటీ వన్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ టు ఇంటెన్సిఫై ది యాక్షన్స్ అండ్ ఫండ్స్ ఫర్ సస్టైనబుల్ లో కార్బన్ ఫ్యూచర్ let us understand important points in climate paris climate change agreement because it's been 5 years since we signed this particular agreement temperatures by 2000 2100 should be limited below 2 degrees celsius if possible to 1.5 degrees celsius financing from 2022 25 is decided as 100 billion dollars from the rich countries as the floor and it will be updated by 2025 specialization developed countries are going to take the more responsibility because of their historical emissions and developing nations are encouraged to enhance the efforts to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions emission goals by 2050 emission the aim is to reach the peak greenhouse gas peak greenhouse gas emission peak as soon as possible and to reduce the reduction and to reduce the emissions as soon as possible burden sharing will be mostly by the developed countries with regard to finances but developing countries can also provide money on a voluntary basis review mechanism will be there once in 5 years so first review will be by 2025 climate related losses needs to be reduced by mitigating and adaptation to climate change these are some of the important provisions of climate change agreement in this context indcs intended nationally determined contributions are proposed every country has submitted their indcs india too has submitted according to indian indcs we are going to reduce the emission intensity by at least 33 percentage by 2030 as compared to 2005 levels and we are going to generate at least 40 percentage of electricity from non fossil fuel source by 2030 we are going to create an additional carbon sink of about 2.5 billion to 3 billion tons this all by 2030 these are the goals for 2030 next issue is great indian busted great indian busted is the state bird of rajasthan it is considered india's most critically endangered bird species this was a news because supreme court has ordered the state of rajasthan to install fly diverters to the power lines transmission lines so why what is the significance of this bird species let us understand it is considered the flagship grassland species which is also known as indicative species for the health of the grassland ecology its population is confined mostly to rajasthan gujarat and small proportion is there in maharashtra karnataka and ap this bird is under constant threats from one collusion and electrocution with the power transmission lines two hunting three habitat loss four alteration of the land you for agricultural purposes these are some of the threats to great indian bustards this is included in the critically endangered list rajasthan government has started project great indian bustard in 2016 center has prepared a report on the impact of transmission lines on great indian bustard based on that supreme court has asked the ng2 to respond on this and ngt has delivered its final order to install to go for underground transmission cables in the uh, habitat areas of Gra- great indian bustard in this context let us understand the habitat and the location of great indian bustard further rajasthan gujarat maharashtra karnataka and ap and some parts of madhya pradesh these are the areas where great indian bustard species are found their habitat is dry grasslands and scrub scrublands its largest populations are found in the indian state of rajasthan it is critic it is in the critically endangered list of iucn and it is part of appendix 1 that is highest protection is prote- provided under i sites and it is part of schedule 1 of indian wildlife protection act and last cms convention last year's convention cms convention on migratory species 
which is also known as bonn convention this convention he has made this great indian bustard as the mascot it was held in india next issue is e20 biofuel government has upgraded the target of ethanol blending what is the meaning of ethanol blending first of all let us see what is the meaning of e20 fuel e20 means blending 20 percentage of ethanol with petroleum gasoline means petroleum ethanol is blended with the petroleum and is used so earlier the possible and the permissible ethanol blending level is 10% now it is increased to 20% in 2019 overall target reached is 5.6 only we want to increase it why because ethanol as it is made with the plant based sources it burns completely so it reduces less emissions or no emissions and this lessens the greenhouse gas emissions when we combust the petroleum and it helps in reducing the import bill and it saves the foreign exchange reserves compatibility of vehicles is the question according to the government compatibility of vehicle to this percentage shall be made by the vehicle manufacturers they have to put the stickers on the vehicles e20 e10 like that they have to put the vehicle stickers based on the compatibility levels next is ethanol blended petrol program this was launched in the year 2003 it is and under this it is encouraged to produce the ethanol production from barley maize corn rice etc and this will be mixed with the gasoline that is petrol we have a national policy on biofuel under this national policy on biofuel there are different types of biofuels first generation biofuels second generation biofuels third generation fourth generation biofuels using food materials that is sugarcane barley maize etc if we produce the biofuel it is known as first generation biofuel it really leads to food insecurity that's why second generation biofuels which uses the organic waste and bio waste that is considered viable for now and ethanol molecules they contain oxygen so it allows the engine to combust the fuel completely so fewer emissions will be released by this that is why ethanol is considered cleaner fuel plus ethanol is produced from the plant material that is why it is considered renewable fuel also e20 is blending if it is e40 that means 40% ethanol 60% petroleum is blended next issue is crop residue management scheme what is this crop residue management scheme we know that stubble burning is causing air pollution and which leads to global warming and climate change so in this context to address this air pollution problem in northern india in in the states of punjab haryana and up and national capital territory of delhi this scheme was launched by ministry of environment and forests this is to reduce the air pollution and to prevent the loss of nutrients and soil microorganisms caused by stubble burning under in situ uh, under this crops residue management scheme in situ management of cross crop residue is done through appropriate mechanization inputs that means appropriate machines are used to cut the crop till the root level so promoting farm machinery banks and a custom hiring centers for custom hiring of in situ crop residue management machinery is part of this this uh, under this scheme awareness generation is also an important pa- component demonstration of cross residue management methods capacity building initiatives information education communication strategies are part of this particular scheme there are other alternative measures to manage this residue one is to promote the biofuels using this two it can be used for uh, generating the heat energy it can be used as a resource to generate the heat energy in the incineration so that is how crop residue can be managed in a better way next issue is invasive alien species in kerala aquatic plant forked fan wort it has painted the water bodies pink which is known as pink phenomenon it is one of the alien species there are other alien species such as giant african snail invasion 
జైన్ ఆఫ్రికన్ స్టే స్నేల్ ఈజ్ నాట్ నేటివ్ టు ఇండియా అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆక్యుపైయింగ్ ది ఇండియన్ వాటర్ బాడీస్ క్విక్లీ న్యూ స్నేల్ పాపులేషన్స్ కంటిన్యూ టు అరైవ్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ఫ్రమ్ స్నేల్ ఇన్ఫెక్టెడ్ కంట్రీస్ అక్రాస్ ది వరల్డ్ ఇట్స్ పాపులేషన్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ఇట్ రెడ్యూజెస్ ది జెనెటిక్ వేరియబిలిటీ ఇట్ రెడ్యూజెస్ జెనెటిక్ వేరియబిలిటీ మెయిన్లీ ఇన్ కేరళ దీస్ ఇన్వేజివ్ స్పీషీస్ వాట్ ది డస్ ఈజ్ దే ఆర్ బయలాజికల్ స్పీషీస్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్డ్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ దేర్ న్యాచురల్ రేంజ్ దే డోంట్ హ్యావ్ ది కాంపిటీషన్ హియర్ సో దే ఎఫెక్ట్ ది బయోడైవర్సిటీ దే ఎంక్రోచ్ ది ఎకో సిస్టమ్ దే ఆల్సో ఎఫెక్ట్ ది హెల్త్ అండ్ హ్యూమన్ వెల్ఫేర్ ఇట్ కెన్ రిప్రొడ్యూస్ ర్యాపిడ్లీ బికాస్ దే డో దే దెర్ ఇస్ నో కాంపిటీషన్ ఓవర్ హియర్ సో దే కంపీట్ ఫర్ ఫుడ్ వాటర్ అండ్ స్పేస్ విత్ ది నేటివ్ స్పీషీస్ సో దట్ ఈస్ వై ఇట్ ఈస్ కన్సిడర్డ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది బిగ్గెస్ట్ థ్రెట్స్ టు బయోడైవర్సిటీ ఇన్ సెప్టెంబర్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీస్ ఇష్యూ వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ ల్యాంటనా స్పీషీస్ విచ్ ఆర్ కన్సిడర్డ్ ఇన్వేజివ్ ఏలియన్ స్పీషీస్ అండ్ గ్రేట్ ఇండియన్ స్టేస్ గ్రేట్ ఆఫ్రికన్ స్నేల్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో వన్ ఆఫ్ ది వర్స్ట్ ఇన్వేజివ్ స్పీషీస్ అకార్డింగ్ టు ఐయూసిఎన్ నెక్స్ట్ ఇష్యూ ఈజ్ సిక్స్త్ మాస్ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్ మాస్ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్ మీన్స్ రెడ్యూస్ రిడక్షన్ ఇన్ ది బయోలాజికల్ స్పీషీస్ సబ్స్టాన్షియలీ జనరలీ మోర్ దాన్ త్రీ క్వార్టర్స్ దట్ మీన్స్ త్రీ బై ఫోర్త్ ఆఫ్ స్పీషీస్ ఇన్ ది జియో ఇన్ ది త్రీ బై ఫోర్త్ ఆఫ్ ద స్పీషీస్ షుడ్ బీ ఎక్స్టెంక్ట్ దట్ ఈస్ నోన్ యాజ్ మాస్ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్ మాస్ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్స్ హ్యావ్ హ్యాపెండ్ ఫైవ్ టైమ్స్ నవ్ this one the upcoming one is going to be sixth one which is considered as anthropocene sixth extinction is considered anthropocene because this is going to happen because of the human activity biodiversity habitats we are biodiversity habitats such as coral reefs rainforests other areas these are fast declining current rate of extinction of species is estimated at 1000 to 10000 100 to 1000 times higher than the natural extinction that is why this is considered as sixth mass extinction which is caused by the human factors that is why anthropocene the word anthropocene next issue is wetlands of india recently under ramsar convention sokar wetland complex is declared as ramsar site of national of wetland of international importance sokar wetland is india's 42nd ramsar site and second one in ladakh in ladakh union territory somoriri wetland is another ramsar wetland that is declared as the first one this is the second one recently few more wetlands are added to the ramsar sites one is lonar lake sur sarovar agra kabartal wetland in bihar asan conservation reserve in uttarakhand after that there are few more that are added in the upcoming months we will discuss them later by 2020 december we there were 42 ramsar sites as of now 46 are there four are added later 2020 december 6 uh, sorry 42nd 42 ramsar sites were there next issue is biological weapons convention we discussed that parliamentary standing committee on health it has recommended for a law to deal with bioterrorism in this context what if if viruses such as corona can be used as bio weapons how to deal with them for that there is a convention which is known as biological weapons convention under biological weapons convention this is a multilateral disarmament treaty to ban the development production and stockpiling of the biological weapons it was signed in 19 sorry 1972 it is a legally binding treaty india has signed and ratified it under this biological weapons convention development stockpiling acquisition retention and production of biological agents and toxins weapons equipment transfer and assistance of the toxins all these are banned next issue is emission gap report emission gap report is published annually by united nations environment program emission gap report means under paris agreement we have certain goals right emission goals so what are the goals that we have what are the emissions that we have emitted are there any gaps so this this report calculates these gaps this is an annual report published by unep which measures the gap between anticipated emissions and levels consistent with the paris agreement goals to limit the global warming what is this unep by the way unep 
is the global environmental authority it is a specialized body under un which was established in the year 1972 it promotes the global agenda it promotes sustainable development under un system it submits emission gap report global environment outlook frontiers invest into healthy planet these are the reports of unep it also runs major campaigns such as beat pollution un 75 world environment day is celebrated by unep wild for life and its headquarters is located in kenya nairobi next issue is climate change performance index very important now india is ranked 10th in the climate change performance index for the year 2021 last year india was ranked 9th position this climate change performance index is published by german watch and new climate institute and climate action network annually since 2005 in 2014 we got 31st rank now we are in 10th rank it is an independent monitoring tool which understands the policies taken by various governments to reduce climate change it aims to enhance the transparency in the international climate policies and it allows for comparison of climate protection efforts and progress made by individual countries this is published annually and india is in the 10th rank 10th position these are the issues of december month thank you very much all the very best